Hello, this is Isa, and in this video I'll go over how the Avatar Rig works and its features. But first, I'll cover some basic rigging concepts for those of you who are not familiarized with that. Let's start with what a rig is. A rig is a virtual skeleton that allows a model to move. It consists of hierarchy of individual bones, much like a real-life skeleton, and it works under a parent-child relationship. Some softwares will treat it as bones, while others will treat it like joints. In Blender, they are bones. They can be deforming or non-deforming. The deforming ones will deform the mesh, and they are responsible for the way the model moves. The non-deforming bones won't deform the mesh, but they are still necessary in a rig because they will be used for FKIK setups, custom properties, and controls. Okay, so what's FKNIK? FK stands for Forward Kinematics. In this setup, the parent in the hierarchy moves all the child bones under it. It works like an articulated action figure, where if you want to raise its hand, first you have to rotate the shoulder, then the arms, then four arms to finally position the hand itself. This gives the animator a lot of control, since the movement is very predictable and it's great for arc motions. IK is quite the opposite and it stands for inverse kinematics, where the child can influence the movement of its parents. This setup works like a string puppet or a marionette, where if you want to raise the hand, you just pull it and the arm will follow the motion. IK is ideal if you want hands or feet to stick in place. Okay, so let's move on to our rig here. This avatar rig has both deforming and non-deforming bones. The deforming ones can be found in the last bottom layer and they will be exported with the animation clip. These bones should not be edited at all in edit mode since changing them in any way can break the rig and the animation won't work when exported. In post mode you probably won't be able to manipulate them because they have constraints. So just leave them there in their own layer since they won't be needed for the animation process. In the other layers you can find the non-deforming bones. They will drive the base skeleton through constraints and they won't be exported in the end. Some are controls, like all the ones in the left set of layers. The ones on the right are the setups for IK, FK and custom properties and won't be used for animation either. As for the controls, they have been separated in layers to make it easier to select them and keep everything organized. In the first layer, you find global controls, such as the root, which moves the whole avatar, spine ones and shoulders. Controls with any custom properties are also in here, like the upper body and head, and I'll cover these later on. Second layer has the FK controls. In the top one, you'll find upper body controls, which are the arms and hands in this case. And in the bottom one are the lower body controls for legs and feet. The third layer is pretty much the same as the second, but for the IK controls. Top one has all the upper body IK, which are the hands and the elbows. And the bottom one has all the foot controls and the knees. The fourth layer has all the finger controls. To see all the controls together, hold shift and select all the layers with controls. To work with separate groups, just select the ones you need. Controls have also been separated by color, depending on their behavior. Yellow is for global controls and controls with custom attributes. Green is for the hip. Blue is for controls with FK behavior. Red is for IK controls. Pink is for the left side controls, like the fingers and shoulder and orange is for the right side controls for the fingers and shoulder. I've added some custom properties to this rig too. If you select the upper body control, for example, you'll notice in the transforms tab that there are some extra properties other than location, rotation and scale. The first four properties in here are the FK, IK blends or switches. As the name says, they let you switch between FK and IK setup. Even though most of the time the arms will be in FK and legs in IK, there are certain situations that will require a different setup. If the hand has to maintain a certain position, like during push-ups or while climbing, the IK will be the best choice. As for the legs, while in the air, swimming or rolling, FK works best. 
This blend ranges from 0 to 1, being 0 completely FK and 1 completely IK. Any other value in between will be a blend of the two. Another custom property in the upper body control is the isolate rotation. It allows you to choose if the bone will inherit its parent rotation or not, while in FK mode of course. This attribute also ranges from 0 to 1, while at 0 the bone will inherit the rotation and at 1 it will completely follow the parent's behavior. Any other value in between will be a blend of the two. This is an interesting tool because it causes the FK bone to maintain its position, behaving a little like an IK. In this control, you'll find the isolate function for both arms. The head control also has the isolate rotation. It's really helpful for open cycles since the head will keep its rotation even though the torso is twisting. Without this option, the animator will have to manually rotate the head every time the torso twists in order for it to be straight and look forward. Something about these properties is that if you don't keyframe them manually by pressing I on top of them or selecting the option Location, Rotation, Scale and Custom Properties when keyframing the controls, they won't be automatically keyframed and this will mess up your animation, especially if you're turning them on and off during the action. Another solution for keyframing custom properties is selecting Keying under the Timeline tab and on Active Keying Set, select Location, Rotation, Scale and Custom Properties. That way, every time you press I, a keyframe will be created without the pop-up menu. By default, that option is not enabled, but feel free to choose the method that suits you best. Ok, now we move to the reverse IK foot. Animating an FK foot is pretty straightforward. Just grab any of the controls and rotate it. Since there is a control for the foot and another for the toes, the animator has full control over the movements. However, for the IK it's not so simple. The foot has to stick to the ground while also being able to rotate on the ball and heels and from side to side. For this reason, this IK foot has four controls. The first one is the foot roll that rotates the foot back and forth and side to side. To avoid bending too much on the heel or too much on the ball, a limit was set so the foot rig doesn't break. When it reaches the limit, the foot will stop rotating. The next one is the toe tip roll. It rotates the foot from the tip of the toes and as you can see, it only rotates forward. Then, the toe controls rotate the toes from the ball. And finally, we have the foot control. This is a global control that moves the foot as a whole. Since it's the parent of all the other foot controls, it will keep any transforms while also being able to be grabbed and rotated. Lastly, I'd like to go over lock transforms. Some controls may have a lock symbol next to the transforms parameters, which means that those values can't be changed. This was done to controls that should only behave in a certain way and to avoid any unwanted transformation. For example, elbows and knees are meant to rotate on just one axis, and other examples of controls with locked attributes are IK elbows and knees, fingers, foot row and toe tip. I suggest keeping this locked, but in case you want more freedom of movement, just click on the lock icon to unlock it. Alright, this covers up all the features of the Avatar Amateur. You can also find all this information on the rig documentation at thecentralend.org. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching and until next time!